This is a beautiful psalm, Psalm 84, and we will study this today in our Sunday school. Are you there? Okay, we will read this responsively. How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts! Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, in whose heart are the ways of them. They go from strength to strength, every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. Amen. And then, no, sabi niya eh, for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. Isang araw lang daw dito sa kung saan nandun ang Diyos, titipon para sa Diyos, mahigit pa sa isang libo na kahit na ano pa yun. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Father, we thank you for this psalm. We thank you, Lord, that you allowed us this day to read thy word. We thank you because just by reading your word, it already gives us encouragement, already gives us, Lord, to understand very important truths, Lord, about you, about us, about gathering together, about your goodness to all, and about us trusting in you. I pray, O oh God, that as we study this psalm, we will know you more, understand more, Lord, about how you work in our lives, and we will see, O oh God, that you does not want to withhold anything from us as long as we walk uprightly in thy sight. So help us, O oh God, to be worthy of your blessings and help us, O oh Lord, to always glorify your name. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So let us look at a blessed life. A blessed life. You know, whenever we study the scripture or the passages of scripture, we can always find what we call a key verse. And when we found that key verse, we can link everything in that passage or chapter to the key verse. And we will understand what that particular passage is actually teaching. In Psalm 84, the key verse is found in verse number 12. Wherein the Bible says, O Lord of hosts, Blessed is the man that trusted in thee. You see, in our lives, we trust so many things and we trust so many people, but we are forgetting that blessing comes in trusting the Lord. Yes, there are people who love us unquestionably. There are people who care for us. There are people who want nothing but the best for us. But then again, people are people. People are limited, people are short-sighted, people does not even know what will happen a second after now. People is simply a creation of God. We are creature and it is best to always trust in the creator who knows from the beginning until the end. Amen. So that is why... The Bible says that happy, 
Blessed is a man that trusted in the Lord. So how can we be a blessed person looking at Psalms 84? Number one, we must have a recognition of God in our lives. We must have a recognition of God in our lives. You see, the fundamental reason for all unhappiness in the world is that God is left out of their lives. You remove God and you cannot truly be happy. You may have all the things that the world can offer you, but when you die, then there is no more hope. There is no more assurance. There is nothing for you except to be punished in the lake of fire. Life is temporal. Only eternal life is eternal. Amen. So that is the reason why if God is not in your life, then your happiness is a vain thing. That is what Solomon says, that he tried to look for happiness in riches, and he became the richest man in the world. He tried to find happiness in women. He got 1,000 of them. He tried to find happiness in intellect, and he can even understand the language of the animals. He tried to find happiness in vices, and you name it. He tried to find happiness in life, and then the conclusion, he says, that all is vanity under the sun. And he said that a person can only be truly happy if he will fear God and keep his commandment, because that is the whole duty of man. Amen. Amen. So you remove God, and you have nothing. You remove God, and you cannot be truly happy. Look at Psalms chapter 14, verse number 1. We studied this uh, yesterday. Psalms chapter 14, verse 1. The fool had said in his heart, there is no God. Actually, it means that for me, there is no God. Because you cannot say and declare that there is no God. Because who are you to declare something that you do not know? But the fool is expressing his opinion and he's saying, as far as I'm concerned, there is no God. But that is only as far as he's concerned. But as far as God is concerned, he will be punished in eternity. So it is foolishness to live a life that is independent of God. So how different was the experience of the psalmist? Because the psalmist trusts in the Lord. Amen. And look at how he described God in his life. He said in verse number one, How amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. He is actually saying and telling us that his God is the Almighty God. You see, when you believe in God, you are on the side of the Almighty. And no person can be happier than a person who knew that he is on the Lord's side. Amen? Why? Because there is no defeat on the side of the Lord and there is no victory against God. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Amen? So we can be truly happy if we know that we are on the side of the Lord. Look at verse number 3. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. You see, if you have God, then you have a King. And if you have a king, then you are a subject, but a happy subject because you have a righteous king. A king that will never shortchange you, a king that will never abuse you, but a king that will do everything in his power in order to make your life happy and joyful and make your life the best as it can be. Look at verse number two. Look at how he described God. He says, My soul longeth, yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Amen? He described God as a living God. Meaning to say, we are worshiping a living God. We are worshiping a God who can hear our prayers. We are worshiping a God who can answer our prayers. We are worshiping a God who can help us. In our trouble, we are worshiping a God who understands our situation. And we are worshiping a God that can help us. Why? Because He's alive. 
and look at the world they're worshiping a dead god that when the flood will come they have to save their gods when fire will come they have to save their gods when trouble comes and their god cannot do anything for them remember the battle of carmel they worship baal and baal is nothing and he cannot do anything for them but when elijah called upon their god he answered by prayer by uh, by fire in order to consume the offering so if you trusted in god then you are trusting on him who is living the almighty god amen so that is why you are happy try to love a dead person how can you be happy but when you know that the person that you're loving is living and loving and caring then you can truly be happy look at verse number three yea the sparrow had found a house and swallow a nest for herself when she may lay her young even thine altars O Lord of hosts my king and my God so he is our king he is our God look at Isaiah chapter 6 verse number 5 Isaiah 6 5 then said I woe is me for I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I dwell in the midst of the people of unclean lips for in mine eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts amen so he's the king he is the Lord of hosts he is the almighty God he is the king of kings and he is the Lord of lords everybody will bow down to our king amen so you see when you see the glory of the king you will see your own misery but the good thing is that when you saw your misery when you saw that you are nothing then the king will do something and will make you a somebody in his court amen so we are only important because of god you remove god we are nothing you remove god there is nothing that we can hold on to in our life look at verse number eight he says here O lord god of hosts hear my prayer give ear O god of jacob zilla you see he did not mention god of abraham he did not mention god of isaac he did not mention god of moses he mentioned god of jacob do you know why because he's trying to emphasize that when you have god that when you trust in believing god then god can change you from being a sinner into a righteous person amen you see jacob was a supplanter he was a cheater he was a person that you cannot trust but because jacob found god he became israel the prince of god amen so that's why when he he used the the, the praise of god of jacob he is emphasizing that our god is a god who can change you that our God is a God who can give you another chance. That our God is a God who will never give up on us. Kaya napakapalad natin. Ano man yung nagawa mo, nangyari sa'yo. Because we are serving the God of Jacob, He can change us from being a low-life person to somebody that will be sitting with Jesus in the heavenlies. That is the greatness of our God. That's why he says that he is the God of Jacob. And look at verse number 9. Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. He also described God as his shield. And in shield, pananga. Pag ang pananga mo ang Panginoon, walang tatagos. No matter how Satan will throw his fiery dart at us, as long as God is our shield then we are safe he is our haven of rest he is our buckle he is our rock he is the place where we can hide by the grace of god from the enemy so that the enemy can't even touch us amen, amen. mc hammer chapter 2 verse number one amen can touch this Eh, but natatouch tayo minsan with the permission of God. But without God's permission, Satan cannot do anything. Wala ho siyang magagawa laban sa atin. Look at verse number 11. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. 
the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Kita mo yung kabutihan ng Panginoong Diyos. He is willing to give us everything as long as we live according to His word. God is our protection. Amen? So if you have God and you recognize God in your life, then you have all of these things. Not only that, there must be a recognition of God in our lives, but there must be a desire for God in our lives. There must be a desire for God in our lives. You see, the unconverted or unbelieving people have no desire for God. All of their desires are for the flesh, for themselves. They are selfish and they only look at the temporal. They never look at the eternal because most of them do not even believe in the eternal. For them, that ends everything. But for those people who believe in God, then we know that our desire must always be with God. Amen? Unlike the unbelievers, look at their desire. Romans 3.11 311. There is none that understand it. There is none that seek it after God. So if you don't, you are an unbeliever, you will not seek God. Why? Because you do not believe in God. How will you seek for something or for somebody that you do not even believe? When the fool had said in his heart, there is no God, why will he seek for something that he does not believe in? That is why, because we are God's children, because we believe in God, then there must be a desire in our hearts for God. Amen. Amen. Meaning to say, the priority of, in our heart must always be of God. Look at verse number 2. My soul longeth, yea, even fainted for the courts of the Lord. See? My soul longeth, yeah. or even fainted. Yung para bang kinikilig ka, hinihimatay ka. Sa sobrang excitement para mapunta sa tahanan ng Diyos. Yun yung nagtitiwala sa Diyos. That is, that is the characteristic of a person who believe in God. There is that desire to be in the court of the Lord in our time, to be in the place where the church meet. There should be that longing pero nasa mo na ba'y naglolong ka sa isang tao? Dahil minahal mo? Sabi nga, malayo man, malapit din, pilit ko rin mararating. Sabi ko, oh, pag-ibig na makapangyarihan, kapag ka pumasok sa puso, nino man, hahamakin ng lahat, makamtan ka lamang. King Tabak, eh, ko tatakot. King Sibat, eh, ko tatakot. Bangketa, punta lang da ka, akit ke ke kang malagong lupa. Diba? Sabi ko, otdang bong. Kalimutan ko na sabi ko. Eh. There is that longing. Nung nainlove ako kay Sister Maribel, gusto ko lagi nakikita. Kaya hanggat wala pa ang tatay, lagi ako doon pupunta sa kanila. Kahit makasulyap man lang, ayos na. Di ba? Have a good Reason. Pedrick. Hindi tuloy ang kasal. Have a good one. Brother Alex. So, bakit mahal mo eh? Kita mo natin mahal tayo sa tao para tayo mga baliw. Tama mali. Brother Eden. Hanggang ngayon, parang ang baliw eh. <laughs> Di ba? Tao yun! Kinukonsumi tayo nun minsan. Prank yung kita eh. Inaasar tayo nun minsan. Pinarulong ko tayo minsan. Sinasaktan tayo minsan. Pero ang Diyos na kahit kailan, walang ginawang masama, hindi ka excited na makita o mapuntahan. Amen. Mga kapatid, nakakahiya naman. Nihaya naman ako sa'yo. <laughs> Di ba? 
Fabinha, my soul longed, yea, even fainted for the cause of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cried out for the living God. Kaya mo makapunta, absent ka pa. Anong klase naman yan? Amen. Amen. There must be desire for God in our lives. Amen. Look at verse number 3. Yea, the sparrow had found an house and the swallow a nest for herself where she may lay her young even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. You see, because of his desire for God, he even has a jealousy against the bird because the bird can stay there as long as they want. Yung pusa nga dito na nakatire. Kaya nahuhulog na minsan eh, yung puro butas na. Samantalang tayo, pag narito, para tayong inip na inip. Diba? Hindi, hindi yun ang attitude. That's not a blessed life. A blessed life must have this desire for God. There should be that desire to always be in the house of the Lord. There must be that desire to be always with the people of God. Why? Because when we are with the people of God, at least we can say that nothing bad can really happen because I have a better chance to live a better life with the people of God than with the world. Hindi tayo perfect. Totoo yun. May mga maloko, may mga mainitin na ulo, may mga ganito, may mga ganun. Pero mas malaki na yung chance natin dito. Kesa doon sa labas. Amen? Kaya nga sabi niya, I'm longing. I'm longing to always be in the house of the Lord. So there must be the desire for God. You look at the uh, verse uh, number 10. He says, For a day in thy court is better than a thousand. Sipi mo yun, yung comparison. One day versus one thousand, and he said, I would rather choose one day. If I only have one life, to, one day to live, or a thousand days to live, this one day will be spent with God, and this thousand days will be spent in the world. He says, I would rather choose to live one day with God than 1,000 days out of the will of God. See, you may So, we say, just, bibigyan kita ng pagpipilian. Mabubuhay ka either isang araw lang o isang libong araw. Ang isang araw kasama mo ko, ang isang libong araw kasama mo sa libutan, anong pipiliin mo? Panginoon naman, no brainer, 1,000. <laughs> Di ba? <laughs> Pero yung salmis, hindi. Yung isang araw, Bakit? Kasama ko kayo, Panginoon. Eh. Yung isang araw, dahil yung isang araw na yun, natitiyak ko na araw ng kagalakan, kaligayahan. Araw ng kaluwalatian. Araw na hindi maitutumbas sa lahat ng araw na mararanasan ko sa aking buhay. Kesa isang libong araw na punong-puno ng pighati. At malayo sa iyong kalooban. Amen? Kaya kita masabi pa ng salamis, look at Psalms chapter 16, verse 11. Actually, bago natin basahin nyo, basahin muna natin yung rest of, of the verse. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Diba? So verse number 10, yung, yung last part. I, I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And then look at Psalms chapter 16, verse number 11. Thou wilt show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand are pleasures forevermore. Ano daw? Hindi baling mababang posisyon. Pero sa presensya mo ay pleasures forevermore. I remember, naalala ko na naman tuloy si, ano, si Eddie Mesa. Yan yung Elvis Presley of the Philippines. Eh. Nasave yan sa Baptist Church. Yung ginamit ng just Baptist Church. And then once he got saved, he wanted to offer his voice for God. He said, the Lord gave me this talent and I want to use this talent for the Lord. I want to sing in the church. But the pastor of that Baptist church said, we will go to that. Time will come that you may be able to sing, 
But right now, you need to start to be standing at the door and greeting our uh, people that are coming in the church or even our visitors. And he rejected that. And he went to a non-denominational church. Hindi niya kasi alam ito eh. Balik nga tayo sa verse 10 ng 84. Hindi niya kasi nabasa yata ito. Hindi na ituro sa kanya. Yung sinasabi, that I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. And now, he believed that he's serving God by using his voice, but he's with the people that do not worship and trust God in a biblical way. Sino mga nakasama niyo? Sila Ray Ann Fuentes. Sino mga kasama niyo? Yung mga artista na sila Gary Valenciano. O, Pastor, okay naman sila. Well, compared sa iba, talaga namang okay sila. Pero compared sa tama, hindi sila okay. Why? Because they're trying to mix entertainment. They're trying to mix popularity and serving God. They're trying to mix being popular and lifting up the name of God. That can't be. You cannot serve two masters. And John the Baptist already lined the, uh, laid the foundation and he said, He must increase, but I must decrease. In order to serve God, you must deny your self. Kaya, bili pa ako kay Janet Basco eh. Nasabi yan under the ministry of uh, Pastor uh, Roman Esteban doon sa Quezon City. And then, nung masave siya, huminto siya altogether sa pag-awit. Sa entertainment world. Eh, sikat pa siya no, nung masave siya. Ano yung sikat na kanta niya kung alam niyo? You made me live again. Hindi ba? Alam mo yan, kapatid? Kantayin mga minsan niya pag walang tao rito. Oh. Oh, kanta niya yun. Sikat siya noon. Pero when he got saved, kinalimutan niya yun. Pinahindihan niya ang sarili niya. Kaya nung mag-preach ako doon, nung pastor na si Pastor Paem, pangani, uh, panganiban, eh, hindi ko man siya na-recognize. Nung tapos na service, pinakilala lang. Ah, pastor, si Janet Basco, ay sis, kumusta ka ako? Sabi ko sa kanya, hindi, ay, pa-autograph nga. Hindi. We, we, hindi natin pin, ina, itinataas ang ego ng tao. We praise God because of our attitude, but she cannot do it without really understanding and knowing God. Why? Because there's too, too many of her predecessors who are still in, in the entertainment world. Even though they claim that they got safe. Eh, si Isa Esguerra yata, kaliname niya rin minsan na born again siya eh. Kaya naging bago siyang nilalang. Pas, pati si Cherise Pempenko. Nung naborn na ganyan siya, naging bago siyang nilalang. Dati siyang babae, ngayon, lalaki na. Kaya sabi nila, kami biblical. Hindi ah, ba? Talagang lahat ay nagbago na. Hinakaraan ay wala na. Ngayon, pati pangalan niya, bago na yung pangalan ni Cherise. Jake Cyrus. Naking grow. Ha? Ah, joke serious. Yan ang pangalan niya ngayon. Sabi mo. So there must be the desire for God. Amen? Listen to me, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Is there a desire for God in your life? If you will compare the desire for the world and the desire for God, which is stronger? Kung merong worship service, merong contest ng mobile legend, saan ka mas excited? <laughs> Di ba? Tanong mo sa rito mo. May basketball, may service, saan ka mas excited? Sa basketball, bigay todo ka. Sa paglilingkod ba, bigay todo ka? Ay, hindi. Kahit na i-right-right nyo kami, right talaga yun. Oh. Manood kayo. Ayan, si, si Claude, nanonood dyan. Oh. Serious kami pag nag-basketball. Nagkakapikunan pa kami pag nag-basketball. Kasi seryoso kami. Ganun pag seryoso ka. Oh, hindi ba pag may nagtuturo ng mali, hindi mo mapigilan ng sarili mo? 
Bakit seryoso ka eh? Hindi ka nakikipaglaro. Hindi ka nakikipagbiro. Ganoon. Oh. Kaya kami sa basketball, pag may tawag na mali, nagagalit kami. Sa paglilingkod sa Diyos, pag may nagturong mali, nagagalit kami. Why? Seryoso kami. Oh. Kaya pag mayroong ano, patitirayin lang ng patitirayin sa Diyos lagi si Paspin, hindi ko guwardyahan. Eh, mali yun. <laughs> oh. Kami nga ni Brother Jun, magkakapalit na kami ng mukha eh. Pag nagbabasketball kami, banggaan kami ng banggaan. Yung tiyan namin, nag, minsan, parang lumakit kay Jun yata ito. Ako, babanggain ko siya para bumalik. Oh. Saan ka maseryoso, kapatid? Is there a desire for God in your life? If you want to live a blessed life, a happy life, then there must be that desire for God in your life. Not only that, but there must be a walking with God in your life. There must be a walking with God in your life. Look at verse number 6. Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. The Bible says, we will all pass through the valley of Baca. Ano yung valley of Baca? It is the valley of weeping. It is the valley where we have problems. It is the valley where we are experiencing depression, tribulation, negative circumstances, crisis in our life. And all of us will pass there, whether you like it or not. If you don't have God, you may raise up your arms in surrender when you are in the valley of Baca. But if you have God, if you have God, and you desire to walk with God, look at verse number 6 again. Who passing through? We will not stay there at the valley of, ba of Baca. Why? Because we're walking with God. We will continually be in motion. We will continually move forward. And we will pass through the valley of Baca, even though there is weeping, there will be rain, even though it is a life that may uh, be characterized by dryness, God will make it something that will be filled with water. God can do something with our problems and crisis if we will only walk with Him. Parang sinabing, though I walk through the valley, not stay there. Through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Eh, yung kapareho yan. Oh, kaya mga kristyano, ano man ang daanan, nalalampasan. Pag nagtitiwala sa Diyos. Pero pag hindi, doon ka na. You will linger there, you will languish in that place. Why? You do not walk with God. You may be saved, but you do not walk with God. You may be saved, but you do not trust God. You will stay in lamenting your life forever. Bakit ayaw mo na lumakad eh? Natakot ka eh. Alam niyo yung, 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 do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? Yung, yung mga sheep, Kasi meron, meron daan doon na tinatawag na shadow of the valley of death. Na kung saan, meron talagang shadow that is very daunting na natatakot dumaan doon yung mga baka. Yung mga baka. Beka kasi ito eh. Yung mga sheep. Pero because of the shepherd, they will be able to negotiate that place. Hindi, yung iba kasi, yung shadow of the valley of death, sa kanila kamatayan yun, hindi ho. Hindi death yon shadow of the valley of death. It's not death. But it is something that is so scary. But because of the shepherd, he can lead us through that and he can also lead us through the valley of Baca. Hindi baka ha, Baca. Pag baka yan eh, baka mali tayo. So, that is why there must be what we call a walking with God in our life. Look at verse number 7. They go from strength to strength. Every one of them 
in Zion appeareth before God. So we can pass through that and we will see God. We will see the power of God in our lives. That is why trusting the Lord is the main thing. And you can tie all of this up. You can only have the desire for God if you trust Him. You will only walk with God if you trust Him. And next, you will only speak to God if you trust Him. There must be a speaking to God in our lives. Look at verse 8 and 9. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. You see, we talk to God. Why? We trust God. You don't talk to people that you do not trust. Ano nga sabi ng mga magulang sa bata? Don't talk to strangers. Oh, hindi ba? But God is not a stranger. He is our personal God. We know Him. He knows us by name. So there must be a speaking to God in our life. So you can truly be happy if you have a direct communication to God. Amen? Nalala ko tuloy yung a uh, story in, in, in the States about, uh, you know, being regionalistic. Uh, th- there was this uh, itinerant missionary going from one place to another during the, the olden times, n- not today. So he was in Georgia and he said that uh, we have a telephone here that you can call God directly for $50 per minute. Oh, that's expensive. Well, that's heaven. Long distance call. He said, no, no, no. Uh, I'll pass for now. And then he went to Alabama. Same thing happened. He said, we have a telephone here that you can speak directly to God. It will cost you $50 per minute. Oh, no, no, no. I will pass this one because it's too expensive. So he went to Mississippi, the same thing. He went to Louisiana, the same thing. And then he went to Texas. And then the pastor said, we have a telephone here that you can access God directly. He said, how much? For 10 cents per minute. Oh, why is it cheap? Because here, it is just a local call. (laughs) Texas is near heaven. So you can... Call God just for 10 cents. Amen? <laughs> yeah! yeah! Woo! Oh, yeah. Uh, di ba? Dito, ganun din. Uh, kaya pag kristyano ka, local call ka lang. Ayan. Pag hindi, ay, naku, ano ba? Okay! We address our prayer to God. Amen? Not to anybody else. That's why don't pray to me. I will not pray to you. Amen? Uh, Brother John, don't pray to me. You pray to God. I remember my pastor when when we were still in uh, Kabanatuan. It was uh, the anniversary at Baptist Temple, so we went there. And we are already doing the ministry in Kabanatuan. We are looking for an expansion. So when we were there, I talked to my pastor and said, Pastor, uh, can I ask for those used woods and GI sheets and all of these things so that we can expand our place of worship in Kapanatuan City? He said, no, no, you, you, you cannot uh, get it. It will stay here. But I, I don't think you're still going to use them. Yeah, it doesn't matter. It will stay here. But Pastor, we need it. Who called you to Kapanatuan? Ask me that question. God. So don't talk to me. Talk to God, he said. So I got nothing, not even a nail. But by the grace of God, we were able to expand when I trust in the Lord. Amen? You see, he's teaching me a lesson. He's not stingy. It's not that because he doesn't care. He's teaching me to trust God. Whenever we complain, he will always say, who called you? (laughs) God. So, So don't complain to me complain to God. No matter what you say to my pastor, that is his constant answer to you. And he is constantly pointing us to the Lord. So there must be a speaking to God. 
in our lives. Kaya pag may problema kayo, kayo mga ikakasal, sino ang nag- mag-iisa sa inyo? Ha? Si Rizon? Ay, walang mangyayari sa buhay nyo. Dapat mag-iisa sa inyo ang Diyos. Pagpambiray, may kapangyarihan ka dapat na praga. You can unite two people to be one flesh. God! So pag may problema kayo, wag sa amin, sa Diyos. Amen? Wag kay daddy, wag kay mami, wag sa mga biyanan, sa Diyos. Oh, amen? Amen! Pinag-isa na sila ng Diyos. Pag pinag-isa na sila, tayo naman mga mugulong, tayo misa doon makialam. Oh. Pinag-isa na nga sila ng Diyos eh. Sabi nga, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> oh, di ba? E minsan na may sa magulang eh. Oh. Nako. Kaya ako hindi ako masad nakikialam sa mga... Ang, ke, ke, liban lang kung tanungin ako. Liban lang kung ano. Kaya lang kayo pinakialam ang Brad. Mula nung magplano kayo ng kasalan. Kaya lang, kaya lang, kaya lang. Wala. Oh, eh, talaga hindi ako nakikialam. Kahit na yung seryong, wala. Bakit? Practice na nila ng decision making yan. Oh, ngayon, yung mga mali nila ron, matututo na sila hanggat pwede pa nilang i-correct. Ay, baka pag mag-asawa na yan, doon nagkamali, mahirap na i-correct. Hindi natin. Kaya nga sabi ng Bible, train up a child. <laughs> Napunta tayo sa kasalan. Ano? Train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old. Ibig sabihin, pagdating niya sa edad, tumanda na, na-train mo na, hayaan mo na. Oh, di ba? Hindi, tinetrain mo habang may hininga ka eh. Ay, hindi, habang may buhay, habang may buhay. Hanggat ang dugo ko'y dumadaloy. <laughs> hindi pwede, hindi ko kayo pakialaman. Mali. Nung nagpamilya ka ba, ganun ka. Oh, nung pamilya kami, wala na eh. Kami dalawa eh. Ang dahil namin wrong ano, mistakes. <laughs> May mga right mistakes din naman kami. Dami eh. Wala eh. Kami lang dalawa eh. Patay na ang nanay niya. Galit ang tatay niya. Buhay ang nanay ko, tatay ko, wala namang pakialam sa akin. Kasi pinamigay nga ako, wala pa akong isang taon. <laughs> oh. Wala, kaming dalawa lang. Oh. Pero, pero, yung mga mistakes, yung mga ano na yung sa buhay namin, yun ang nagpatibay sa amin dalawa. O bakit? Kasi may plano ang Diyos sa bawat pamilya. Pag nag-asawang mga anak, meron na siyang pamilya. Ay pamilya pa rin naman ako. Ha? Hindi na ikaw ang primary pamilya. Hindi na, ganti yan eh. Nakaka, ano eh, nakaka, pagka dumarating sa ganyang ano, parang gusto mong i-pour out yung puso mo eh. Sa pamilya, may darawang relationship. Medyo na sidetrack ako eh, pero okay lang. Speaking with, for God naman ito eh. May dalawang relationship. Yung tinatawag natin na marriage relationship, husband and wife, at saka parents, parent-children relationship. So dalawa, husband and wife, parent-children relationship. Pag ikinasal, sabi, he will leave father and mother, and he will cleave to the wife. Ano ibig sabihin? Yung Parent-child relationship, temporary lang yun. Kasi iiwan yun. Yun namang husband and wife relationship, forever yun. Kasi magkiklip ka dun. Kaya nga sinabi ng Diyos, what God has joined together, let not man put asunder. Kasi anong relationship yung husband and wife? Permanent. Yung parent-child, temporary because you will leave your father and mother. Ah, di ba? Iwan mo eh. So, hindi permanent yung relationship. Iwan mo eh. 
Nung iwanan mo, meron kang nag-cleave ka. Kanino ka nag-cleave? Sa wife. Bakit? Kasi permanent yung relationship ng husband and wife. Kaya nga, lahat ng anak nag-asawa na, lahat ng anak wala na sa bahay, magkasama pa rin si husband and wife. Hmm. Ha? Hmm. Hmm. Oh, hindi ba? Stoy. Oh. Totoo yun. Totoo yun. Mark chapter 10. Oh. Mark chapter 10. Ay, ay, naligaw na tayo. Sabi ko sa'yo, gulit nyo kasi. Hmm. Mark chapter 10 ba yan? Tingnan natin. Verse number 6 muna. Oh. But from the beginning of the creation of God, made them male and female. Ayan. Ano ibig sabihin niyan? Sa marriage relationship, ang isang cause ng problema, yung differences. Kasi male yung isa, female yung isa. Iba yung pag-iisip ng male, iba yung pag-iisip ng female. Iba yung needs ng male, iba yung needs ng female. So there can be conflict because of the differences. But we must use that differences to unite us, not to divide us. Uh, yeah? For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. Ano ang gagawin? You will leave your mother and your father. And you will cleave. Ano yung cleave? It is a Greek word sa English like glued to your wife. Bakit? Kasi you became one. You cannot separate each other anymore. One na kayo. Amen. Ayan you know, For this cause, what cause? Marriage. Amen. Ano yung cause na naiiwan ng, ng uh, anak ang kanyang nanay at tatay? Marriage. Yun ang cause. Yun ang dahilan. Yun lang ang dahilan para iwan mo magulang mo. Oh, for this cause, shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his, uh, to his wife and they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain but one flesh. Kaya yung father and mother, nawala na yung kanyang karapatan sa kanyang anak bilang katulad ng karapatan niya nung wala pang asawa ang anak niya. Kasi nung nag-asawa, naging isa siya at kaisa nung uh, pangasawa niya. So, wag mo nang expect yung obedience sa'yo ng anak mo nung wala pa siyang asawa ngayon. Yung degree. Wag mo nang expect yung degree ng loyalty ng anak mo sa'yo kasi may asawa na siya at ang full loyalty niya doon na sa kanyang asawa. Huwag mo nang expect na bigyan ka ng ganong karaming time ng anak mo kasi yung time niya, primarily, ibibigay na niya doon sa kanyang asawa. Bakit? May pamilya na siyang kanya. Oh. Ayan o. 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 What therefore God hath joined together let not the in-laws put us under. Oh, ayun, no? Oh, biblical. Oh, di ba? Oh, bakit? Kaya nga nag-asawa eh. Tinan mo mga magulang nyo. Nakaiwalay sila. May pamilya sila. Tinan nyo kung sino inisikasa ng mga magulang nyo. Kayo! So, eto ngayon ang tanong. How can you balance honoring your parents to Cleaving to your wife. Uh, anong balance doon? Kailangan may balance. Hindi naman, dahil nag-asawa ka na, eh, siya pwera na magulang mong mali. Uh, mali yun. Kailangan, you honor your parents. Paano paraan? Yung legitimate needs nila, ibigay mo. Pagtandaan nila, kailangan mong alagaan, alagaan mo. Huwag mong dalhin sa ano, tahanang walang hagdan. Ah, hindi pa, sir. Dadaling ko sa tahan ng walang bubong para mapadali. Hindi, mali. Alagaan mo kung kailangan. Oh, di ba? Bigyan mo ng pera kung kailangan. Yung walang korban, di ba sabi sa Bible, korban? Yung korban eh, 
release na ako sa obligasyon ko sa parents ko. No, pag kristyano ka, hindi ka release sa obligasyon mo sa parents mo. Si Maribel, nung buhay pa ang tatay, gusto niya tulungan ng tatay, hindi ko siya pinakikialaman. Karapatan niya yon. Pag-honor niya yun sa magulang niya. Actually, tumulong pa ako because I also honor my father-in-law. Ngayon, tinutulungan ko pa nanay ko ng $100 a month. Hindi siya nakikialam because I'm honoring my mother. Even though hindi ako inaruga ng nanay ko, sa totoo lang. Bahala pang isang taon, <laughs> pinamigay na ako. Wala pa isang taon, pinamigay ako. Actually, itinatwa pa ako eh. Dinig na dinig ni Maribel eh. Gusto pa yatang sabihin na napulot lang ako eh. But I don't care. Magulang ko yun eh. Tinutulungan ko. Hindi niya ako pinakikilaman. Bakit? Kasi that is my part of honoring my parents. So ganito yan. Pag yung desire ng parents mo ay ididisobey yung cleaving, you can, respectfully, you can respectfully disobey your parents. Pag yun naman gusto ng parents mo, ay ng asawa mo, ididisobey yung honoring your parents, you can respectfully disobey your wife or your husband. Ganun yun, yun ang balance. Uh, basta legitimate. Hmm. Eh kaya lang, may ilig tayo sa soap opera, hindi ba? May mga magulang na, kunyari, may sakit ako anak. K- k- kailangan kong arugain mo ako anak. Ayun. Walang ganon. Pag manipulation, huwag ka magpapamanipulate. Ganon din naman ang asawa. Pag dumarating ang binan, oh, bakit allergic ako sa nanay mo? <laughs> <laughs> Hindi pwede rito yan. Walang ganon. Mira naman kayo. Ilagay natin sa, pa, sa, sa biblical way. Kaya nga iting final authority natin eh. Ah, di ba? Kaya, biruan na lang, pero totoo, na ang number one na problema ng mag-asawa, kadalasan mga biyanan. Bakit? Kasi, ang magulang ayaw niyang i-dissolve yung parent-child relationship. Eh, hindi permanent yun, temporary lang yun. Hindi ibig sabihin, hindi mo na anak. Ibig sabihin, yung relationship nyo as parent and children, mawawala yun, mababawasan yun kasi magkakaroon siya ng sariling pamilya, magkakaroon din siya ng sariling mga anak. Na kailangan ng time niya. Tapos gusto mo, hindi anak, paano na ako? Ako nagpalaki sa'yo. Malaki na, hayaan mo na, pinalaki mo na. Hanggang doon ka lang. Eh pero anak, pandak ka. <laughs> Oh, hindi ka pa malaki. Ay, nako. Hmm? Kaya ako, brad, wala kang magiging problema sa akin. Huwag mo lang aabusuhin yung anak ko. Ibang usapan yun. Oh, ganun. At wala ka rin magiging problema sa mga bitan mo, Mili. Huwag mo lang sasaktan si Cedric. Mali yun. Okay? Oh, see, at least nagampanan ko na yung lugar ko sa kasal nyo, ha? Maliwanag na yan, ha? So, wala na akong dapat gawin pa. Na-address ko na yung problema na yan. So, yung balance, ha? Importante dyan. Kaya tapusin na natin to. Amen? There must be trust in God in your life. Amen? Initial trust, that is salvation. And then growing trust, that is day to day, as we experience God. And then ultimate trust, that no matter what happened, we are going to serve God for the rest of our lives because it is better to trust in God. And blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. Amen? Amen? And we will be happy if that is what we are going to do in our lives. Shall we stand up, please? Father, thank you for the Sunday school and even thank you, O oh God, for the uh, side topic that we were able to uh, discuss today. I pray, Lord, that you will...